It was one of those mornings when Chris and Jennifer would not go out to play. They just hung about my kitchen looking bored. Then Chris started his tricks again. <laughs> well, if you have children, you must expect that sort of thing. I always try to see the funny side of it and not get cross, but there are times when... Oh, well, let's not talk about that now. Chris answered the door. It was the postman, with a letter for him from his pen pal, Pepe, the little boy who lives in Switzerland. Young boys and girls are about the most impatient things God ever made. Chris is no exception. So there was nothing for it but to settle down and read Pepe's letter to Chris and Jennifer. Even Wag thought he ought to join in the fun, bless him. After thanking Chris for his last letter and politely inquiring about Jennifer and myself, he went on to tell us his news. One warm, sunny day, Pepe's father was away up on the mountainside cutting down some big trees. These trees are very important to the Swiss people because they build a great many of their farmhouses and other buildings entirely of wood. Well, I'm sure that most boys and girls have seen pictures or models of the Swiss wooden houses called chalets, with their carved wooden balconies and gaily painted shutters. Pepe's father is a farmer, but a lot of his land is like this bit on the mountainside, covered with fir trees. So in the spring and summer, he earns money by cutting down and selling some of his timber. Oh, but dear me, this isn't getting on with Pepe's letter, is it? Ah, where was I? Ah, here we are. Pepe's mother had sent him with an urgent message for his father. He ran all the way and scrambled up the steep mountainside as fast as he could. At last he reached his father and panted out his message. His mother wanted him to come down at once to the cow barn at the back of the house. It was very urgent. He didn't know what was wrong, but Grandad and everyone were there, so he must hurry. Isabella had just had a new car. It was a lovely little thing, with big brown eyes, a very wet nose, and a long pink tongue. Everyone was very happy. Granddad, who knows a lot about these things, said it was a fine car. Then came the biggest surprise of all. Pepe's father gave him the car for his very own. The next exciting thing that Pepe had to tell us was this. One day, the schoolmaster took them up on the hillside above their village, near to where there is a waterfall. And there in the sunshine, he made them sit down on the soft green grass in a semicircle in front of him, just as if they were in class. When they were settled, he told them that the Swiss government had granted them permission to form a society to protect and preserve trees. Then came Pepe's second big surprise. The master told him that he was to be in charge of one of the planting groups and gave him the papers and record books which he had to fill in and keep for the area under his care. So now every week, Pepe and his school friends go up to their part of the mountain to plant fresh trees and look after the ones already planted. They're very proud of their work and do it well, for they know that one day their trees will grow up to be as big as those seen on the hillside over there. 
in the holidays, Pepe, like the rest of his school friends, spends part of his time helping his father on the farm. He says that he's not a kid any longer, because the other day he went up to the high pastures with his father and granddad and was allowed to use the scythe. He can't sharpen it yet. His father did that for him. But he can cut a good swathe and close to the ground, too. Pepe felt very pleased with himself and waved to some of his friends down at the stream below where they were watering their father's horses. Granddad grumbled at him and told him not to swank but to get on with the work. Pepe didn't mind. His friends had seen him and that's all that mattered. Soon it was time to come down off the mountain, so he shouldered his scythe just as his father did and followed him on his way down to the farm. As soon as Peppy got back to the farm, he went straight to the barn to see his calf, Ferdy. For that's the name he's given. Ferdy knows his footsteps and would be disappointed if he did not come and see him. So no matter what the time is or where he's been, Peppy always goes to see his pet. His father says that thanks to his care, Ferdy is growing up to look like a champion calf. During the holidays, all the school children in his district, or Cantham as they are called in Switzerland, have to do an unusual sort of homework. Peppy tells how a man came and told them all kinds of things about bees and beekeeping, like how they should be handled and housed. So when he goes back to school, he will have to answer a lot of questions about bees. Next, Peppy tells Chris about his friend's pet. Felix has a pig. Marley a goat. Jean a brood of chicks. But none of these pets take as long to feed as Ferdy, whose food has to be carefully mixed, and after feeding, he must be brushed. Then one sunny Sunday morning, after church, they saw as they were walking home through the town square, a poster on a wall announcing the local annual spring fair. There were details of all the competitions and events, together with a list of prizes to be won. Peppy made up his mind to enter Ferdy for the Duke Spring Fair. Peppy's sister soon got busy with the local girls working in the evening at their embroidery and needlework, which they are to enter for the spring fair. Experienced village women lent a hand, while to help things along, one of the girls posted them on a zither. activity and excitement affected Peppy too. Ferdy was entered for the champion calf of the year class and Peppy was going to make sure that he won the award. So while the girls were busy sewing upstairs, they took a lantern and went down to the stables to give Ferdy yet another grooming so as to be sure to have his coat shining like silk. At last, the great day arrived, the sun shone and everyone was up earlier than usual. And dressed in their best clothes, they made their way towards the centre of the town, where the fair was being held. Peppy proudly led Ferdy along the street to the fair. Meanwhile, all was chaos and excitement as the girls were busy trying to arrange their needlework on the stall in readiness for the judges. 
Peppy and Ferdy found where they had to wait for the other competitors in their class. The band played, and Peppy remembered seeing a man drink from a huge glass tankard. Soon it was time for the horse judging. Poor Peppy began to feel a bit scared, because he knew that after that was over, then it would be his turn to face the judges with Ferdy. Suddenly it was time. The judges and spectators were waiting. Peppy explained to Chris how they had to stand around while everyone stared at them. He was sure that he was red in the face, so he thought that it was best to stare at the ground. Then they stood in line while the judges went up and down, examining Ferdy and the others all over. Peppy said it seemed a terribly long time to him waiting and wondering if Ferdy was really good enough to win. At last the verdict was given. Ferdy did not win the prize. Peppy was very disappointed. He told Chris he felt like crying, but he knew his father would be cross, so he bit his lips on the inside and kept quiet. But things turned out all right. Ferdy got second prize. Peppy says that he's the happiest boy in Switzerland because for him it was the first prize he'd ever won. That evening after tea, Chris settled down and wrote a letter to Peppy thanking him for all his news and telling him about the various things that he and Jennifer had been doing. Chris brought his letter over to me to read through. Like Peppy's letter, it was a long one. After thanking Peppy for his letter, this is what Chris had written. First, he told Peppy that the dull, cold, wet weather of winter had been followed by a fine, warm spring. The ground along the hedgerows in the new orchard was one mass of daffodils. He and Jennifer had been out picking armfuls for the house and our friends. Chris wanted to know if there were as many spring flowers in the fields around Peppy's farm in Switzerland. And if so, did they have the same kinds, like daffodils and all that sort of thing? Chris then went on to say that he and Jennifer collected small bunches of wild flowers such as cowslips, primroses and violets, which they took to school with them for the nature study class. He said that he liked all the spring flowers, but that his favourite flower was the rose, as he loved its pong. By that I suppose he meant its smell. Chris next wrote about animals, saying that he had a new lot of baby chicks. The sheep had lambs. And that his hen with her chicks liked to swank in front of the turkey cock and make him jealous. Nana the goat has kids and the goose is sitting on her eggs. In the pigsty, Rufus, the pig, is full of excitement and trying to show off because there is a whole litter of little pigs squeaking and running around the place. Even the cows in the meadow have got a touch of spring fever and it won't be long before they will be having calves. Chris told Peppy that he does not do farm work, but that he and Jennifer help his mother by doing things for her, such as riding into the village to get the shopping. That's one job that he and Jennifer love doing. <laughs> I hope that Peppy will understand what Chris means by a smashing job, as I'm sure they don't use such expressions in Switzerland. Having a pen pal of about your own age in a foreign country is an excellent idea. Chris met Peppy when he and Jennifer went to Switzerland for the winter sports. They met at the skiing school when Chris was learning to ski and became firm friends. This summer we hope that Peppy can come to stay with us and so see something of the English way of life. Oh, if only the young people of all nations could mix more with each other, I'm sure the world would be a much happier place. Chris tells Peppy that we get our butter 
and a stuffed light butter called margarine from a shop already made up because he knows that Teddy's family made their own butter and so might think that we here in England do the same. As Chris says, how is he to know unless I tell him? That's what is good about pen pals. They learn so much about the other way of life from each other and that leads to an understanding and appreciation of the fact that in this world we have to learn to live with other people who appear to be different but really are just the same as ourselves. When Chris and Jennifer got back home from the village, they felt as they rode up the drive that something unusual was afoot. Their horses showed that they too felt it. The house looked the same as it always does. From a distance, nothing appeared to be wrong, but something was not as it should be. They could tell that from the behavior of the horses in the paddock. They seemed to be on edge and waiting for something to happen. <laughs> Up at the stables, it was the same thing. The horses were watching and waiting. The cause of all the excitement was this. Benny's new foal, which had just been born. When Chris saw it, he dashed off to fetch Jennifer. As he said in his letter to Peppy, this was big excitement for him, as his mother had promised that he could have Benny's next foe for his very own, to look after, bring up, and to train for riding, and now it was here at last. By way of celebration, Chris and Jennifer give lumps of sugar to all the other horses in the stable. Chris put a lot in his letter about the horses, but that's not to be wondered at, because at Durfo Place, all of us are wrapped up in horses. In fact, we make our living from them. Chris and Jennifer had to look after their own, and they also had to lend a hand with the others. Oh yes, there's always plenty of work for everyone around a stable. told Peppy that he rode his pony Candy into the kitchen, but he didn't mention the telling off I gave him for doing so. From his letter, I now learned something I did not know about. It appears that after I had sent him packing from the kitchen, he made up his mind to play cowboy and do a bit of roundup work on the range. Oh, by the way, when Chris is in these moods, Durfo Place becomes the Lazy Bar Q Ranch, and the home pasture is the range. Chris was aiming to rope that dar foal, but it had other ideas. From his letter, I learned that it took fright and bolted with its mother. They broke through the hedge and galloped off. Chris was really frightened, because he knew the foal was one of our best and worth a lot of money. Luckily, Jennifer came to his rescue, and somehow between the pair of them, they managed to get the mare and foal back into the home pasture. Peppy's letter told of the exciting time he had had at the spring fair, so Chris replied to that by telling him all about the pony club Gymkhana he took part in a short time ago. He described the jumping competitions and gave a very good idea of all the things that go to make up a pony Gymkhana, describing the competitors and their various types of horses, and mentioned that there were spectators all around the place staring at you. So he knows how Peppy felt when he paraded Ferdy in the ring for the judges. And of course, that reminded him to say a word or two about the judges at the pony show. one might expect, Chris gave a hair-raising account of his ride round the course, describing every jump and blaming poor old Candy for any faults. But as I'd watched them jump, I knew that Candy really did very well. Immediately after the jumping, Chris took part in this event. His description in the letter gets a bit mixed up, so watch it for yourself. Mm. 
Nick. Chris tells Hecker that he heard his number being called to enter for another eliminating heat in the jumping contest. He describes it in his letter as being the semi-final. He may be right, but I thought it was the jump off. Anyway, whatever it was, he came through with flying colors. So on through the hot afternoon. Event followed event in quick succession, with the young competitors taking a keen interest in everything while they anxiously awaited their turn to enter the arena. There's something so very English about a pony club meeting that I must make sure that Peppy sees one when he comes to stay with us. Chris wrote with a real feeling of pride when he went on to describe the way in which he worked his way up to ride in the final event for his class. Chris did not win this fine cup, which was to be awarded to the best horse and rider of the show. As you see, it went to someone of greater age and experience. But Chris was able to tell Pepe that he won first prize for jumping in the age group for his class, and that like Pepe, he too was jolly pleased with himself, because he was able to add another fine cup to his ever-growing collection of trophies. about completes Chris's letter, and I don't mind admitting it here and now that I'm very pleased with the way in which he's settled down and written such a long letter. But as he said, he did it to show Pepe that English boys were just as smart as Swiss boys, even when it comes to writing long and interesting letters. Now that's one of the things I like about pen pals, for not only does it build up strong friendships and understanding, but it also encourages a keen sense of friendly competition. I think that's good because it results in people taking a pride in themselves. Yes, I'm really glad that Chris has been one of those wise and lucky boys who, by becoming a pen pal, has been able, through the medium of the letter, to stretch out his hand across the seas to grasp the hand of friendship offered to him by his pen pals.